Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper by Marvin Minsky who's considered to be one of the fathers of artificial intelligence. He was awarded the Turing Award back in 1969. And the title of this paper is absolutely fascinating. Why programming is a good medium for expressing poorly understood and sloppily formulated ideas. On the face of it, it flies against everything that one learns in a typical computer science curriculum, which leaves you with the impression that in order to code something up, you must understand it at a very precise and detailed level. But Minsky in this paper is arguing that that point of view is simply a confusion between form and content. Yes, of course, the grammar of a programming language is really precise and you have to adhere to it in order for your program to compile and run and execute. But what you express within the program itself is completely up to you. And yet we are always told that machines can only do what we explicitly program them to do. They cannot be original or creative. This is the idea that Minsky is arguing against in this paper. He goes on to give some examples of how that might work, but before that, he dispels a common misconception, which is the one related to Goodell's theorem. Without going into the details of the theorem itself, which very roughly states that a complex enough logical system cannot be both consistent and complete, Minsky makes the point that that theorem holds only for self-consistent logical systems. On the other hand, people and the programs that they write are perfectly able to tolerate contradictory facts within their worldview. It is totally possible to write programs which can deal with contradictory facts. A simple way of doing that would be to add some sort of rules for resolving contradictions. He goes through an example over here which tells the computer a series of facts some of which are ambiguous or contradict other facts that came earlier in the sequence, and then asks the computer to make a deduction. And the way this system works is that it gives higher priority to certain facts when they are conflicting. This is the kind of thinking that went into the design of many early AI systems, especially expert systems. Minsky makes the point that instead of thinking of programs as a pre-specified sequence, one could think of it as a court, so to speak, when the program encounters some sort of inconsistency or ambiguity. And you could think of a large program as many such courts consulting each other. In the end, the final result of the program is not simply the output of following a sequence of instructions, but the result of a large and complex interaction between many such components. And today, 50 years later, you can see this very much in the way large distributed systems, programs that run through large data centers behave. It's very hard to predict the behavior of such large systems. In fact, one of the only realistic ways of doing so is to do it empirically. We also regularly see complex, unexpected and emergent behavior in how these large distributed systems behave. In fact, if you see the postmortem of any outage of such a system, you'll be surprised at the kind of unexpected behavior that these systems can demonstrate. So the central point I think Minsky is trying to make in this paper is that yes, it is very much possible to write programs that can deal with uncertainty, that can express vague ideas that the author of that program has not yet worked out. One of the consequences of that is that the program might not behave the way you expect it simply because the idea you're trying to express in that program is vague. Minsky ends with a beautiful comparison with other nuanced and expressive mediums, things like typewriters for writing or musical instruments. They aren't flexible until you learn how to use them. So that was a quick look at Marvin Minsky's essay on how programming is a good medium for expressing vague ideas. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.